And we're back with what to read next with the tiny bookstore. We're going to do a rundown of some of the best new books that came out on July 27th, 2021. If you like the videos that we're doing, or if you just want to keep track to see how we're improving week over week, go ahead and subscribe through the subscribe button. And if you don't mind, if you enjoy the video that you're seeing today, just go ahead and give us a like. So when You Deserve Better came across my desktop, I didn't really have terribly high expectations for it because celebrity self-help books tend to be more miss than hit. But I was pleasantly surprised to find that this was a solid motivational book. And I was actually downright ecstatic to see that Tyler Cameron wrote a pretty good guide to dating and consent for young adults. One of the things that Cameron himself points out in his book is that no one really teaches teens and young adults about what sex and relationships are really about. They're taught about the ABCs, you know, abstinence, be faithful, wear condom, but they aren't really taught about what comes before that, you know, the conversations about boundaries and consent and what the expectations are afterwards. So what I really did like about You Deserve Better is that while Cameron is talking about things that happen in his life, you know, the transition from being a professional football player to being a contractor and the different romantic endeavors and, you know, adventures that he had, he really does go into really good examples and good solid justifications for why, although, you know, he's proud to be a feminist, he's kind of disappointed that he was made out to be such a great feminist because what he's doing is what should be considered normal. So I do think that this is a really great book for, you know, older teens and young adults to give them a good idea of what healthy boundaries and relationships are. Now, there are parts of the book. I'm a big fan of motivational books and books that give you practical tips on how to live a better life. And what of part of Tyler Cameron does in You Deserve Better is giving people motivation and tips on how to strive. But the good thing is that he doesn't really veer into the world of being obsessed with hustle and, you know, just that grind culture. It really is telling people that, you know, you have to put in some hard work and consistent hard work in order to get to where you want in life. I really wasn't expecting to enjoy this book nearly as much as I did. It ended up messing up my whole Saturday schedule because I ended up reading the whole thing cover to cover and I wasn't really planning on getting that involved into the book. So pleasant surprise. It's really my favorite book of the week. That is You Deserve Better by Tyler Cameron. So when reading the Essential Kerner Commission report, I couldn't help but think about all of the different quotes that you've seen about how it's important to learn from the past. Now, the difference between what was going on back in the 1960s and what's going on now is that now we have 54 years of evidence to really show what happens when you don't follow the recommendations that were made in the Kerner Commission's report. Ultimately, they were saying that the reasons behind the civil unrest was you know, inadequate financing, unfair treatment, police brutality. Um, I know, again, this is sounding like deja vu all over again. These are things that people have been pointing out with the quote unquote racial reckoning that we were seeing since the summer of George Floyd. But where we have an advantage here is that we can see that the entire war on crime war on drugs, you know, getting tough approach that people like Richard Nixon and the 45th president took really have not worked over the last 54 years. In the I Have a Dream speech that Martin Luther King did, everyone talks about, you know, how he had the dream that people would of all races would be able to hold hands and that his children would be judged by the content of their character and not the color of their skin. One the part of that speech that isn't really recited and quoted as often is when Martin Luther King Jr. was talking about how Black people in the United States were given a bad check when it comes to freedom and justice. And the Kerner Commission's recommendations really gave solid explanations for how to fund that check. My hope is that people will look at this abridged version of the Kerner Commission report and see how we can implement some of these recommendations so we can actually see the true racial reckoning and we can see true equality and progress for people of all colors. 
For teens and young adults, we have I Am Not Starfire by Marike Tamaki and Yoshi Yoshitani. And this book takes a fresh look at the difficulty of figuring out who you are while you're living in the shadow of someone else's accomplishments. Our main character, whose name is Mandy, she grew up as the daughter of Teen Titans Starfire. And anyone going through their teen years is complicated. You know, it's awkward. It's difficult to find out who you are and see how you fit in. But if you have a parent who is exceptional and is known for going around in a bikini and looking really good at it, you know, that can be very difficult. And that's a big part of the story that we're seeing here in I Am Not Starfire, where it's showing just how this particular person is able to come into her own and really find out who she really is. So again, this is a great book. I found it to be a fun little end of summer read. And I think that it's going to be good for again, ages, um, I'd say teenagers through young adults and up. I didn't expect to have two coming of age books going back to back, but hey, here we are. So next up, we have Weird Kid by Greg Von Eekout. And it tells the story of Jake Wind, who's a middle schooler who had a pretty life-changing summer vacation. And by the time the new school year started, he was alienated from his closest friend and was struggling, struggling to seem normal to everyone else. Now, I can't really get into the rest of the story without spoiling some of the plot points, but I think that this makes for a great middle grade sci-fi novel. I think the sweet spot for this book is going to be kids who are about nine years to about 13 years of age. For the younger kids, we have Too Much Slime by Francis Gilbert and Vin Vogel. This is a kid's book that's a pretty quick read. It tells the story of how a community came together to fight a huge blob of slime that came through their town. Okay, we're going to try this one more time. <clears throat> For the younger kids, we have Too Much Slime by Francis Gilbert and Vin Vogel. This is a quick kids read that tells the story of how a community came together to fight a huge blob of slime that came to their town. It's a really cute and fun way of showing kids how teamwork really does make the dream work. Last but certainly not least, we have We're Going on a Pumpkin Hunt, which is by Goldie Hawk and illustrated by Angie Rosalar. Now, this one's going to feel very familiar to fans of We're Going on a Bear Hunt by Michael Rosen. Now, it's not as much of a parody as it is an, a Halloween homage to the children's classic. So, again, a lot of the repetition of, you know, I'm not scared, but more trying to find those Halloween and fall activities. And that's it for our top favorite books of the week. If you want to see some more of the new releases that we found interesting, just go ahead and check the link in our bio for the new release Tuesday. And if you haven't followed us on social media, we are on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And we'll see you next week.